So this was a review copy that I got it on Netflix. On Netflix. Oh my god. I'm Catherine and I am here today with a review for Edward Scissorhands Parts Unknown Volume 1 by Kate Leth and Brew Roush. So this was a graphic novel that I actually got for review from NetGalley a while ago and unfortunately I actually had to read it on my browser on my computer. So IDW Publishing was the publishing house that allowed me to view this through NetGalley for review and thank you first and foremost and it was awesome like I am a huge Tim Burton fan I love Edward Scissorhands the movie Johnny Depp and what's her face Winona Ryder were so amazing in the movie like iconic characters right there to see something done post movie as a continuation was a little daunting I was like oh uh, uh, don't know how this is necessarily going to translate, especially since the movie wrapped things up quite well for the most part. Like, old Winona Ryder talking to her granddaughter like, hello. So the comic actually picks up probably about 10 years after the epilogue that was in the movie with old Winona Ryder, and it deals with her granddaughter and kind of like the re-emergence of Edward Scissorhands. So the granddaughter finds some stuff and she comes to believe that Edward's actually maybe real. She goes on the hunt. But meanwhile, Edward's also trying to create a companion from the journals and everything that his father had. And it doesn't exactly work out the way it should. This is definitely a book you need to have physically in your hands, I think, to fully appreciate. I had to read it on an Adobe app on my computer, and it sucked. Like, it super sucked. Not the actual comic itself, but the medium in which I had to read it. It was difficult to read when it was zoomed out, but then I couldn't see the full page if it was zoomed in, and I couldn't see the details, and... It was just a pain in the ass. So thankfully it's already out in stores. I have seen it in stores. It was at Forbidden Planet in New York when I was there for BEA and I was this close to grabbing it. And I was like, I've already read it. Maybe if it comes out in like an omnibus with like all of them, then maybe. The illustrations in this were done really, really well. They took their own kind of spin on how Edward was supposed to look. It was a lot more cartoony, um, a lot more innocent looking, and kind of less frightening than the Edward that we know and love from the movie. But it was also done really well. Like, the artist's abilities really shone through with this, and they definitely stay true to the character and the storyline that Tim Burton created, but they did make it their own as well. I loved how they were able, through the very minimal pages that were in this book, able to really portray the relationship between Edward and, oh my god, what's her name? Did she actually have a name? I don't remember if she had a name. But anyway, the granddaughter. The relationship between the two of them was hilarious. Like, you know, it kind of starts off the same way that the original relationship between Edward and What's-Her-Face. I didn't actually like her much in the movie, the character-wise. Anyway. 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 Um, between the two of them, like, there was a little bit of, like, weirdness, animosity, fear, but all of that was pushed aside, and the two of them ended up working together, and I really enjoyed that it was able to come through like that on the pages for me anyway. I don't know how you feel if you read it, but that was how I felt. If you are a Burton fan and you're looking to get into graphic novels or comic books, I think this is the perfect stepping stone for you to kind of like start with. It is awesome. It's very well done. The story is believable within the realm of Edward Scissorhands. It is a good continuation. It's not trying to like retell the original in any way is just sort of bringing it more forward in a new medium for a newer generation and I really appreciate that. 
while I enjoyed it and I really liked the artwork and I appreciated how it was done, I don't necessarily know if it's something that I will continue on reading unless I'm able to kind of get it from a library or borrow it from a friend. While I did like the first and I probably would purchase like all of them together because there are going to be several volumes that are going to come out. It's not something that I would actively seek out to buy every time a new one came into the store. I wouldn't also, if it wasn't available in stores, try and seek it online. I just, I wasn't that much of a fan, but I did like it. I gave it a three stars out of five on Goodreads, and yeah, it was definitely well done and deserves a look from avid fans of Edward Scissorhands. So that's it for my review. Comment down below if this is something that you have been looking into, something that you would want to kind of check out, if you're interested in graphic novels at all. What's your favorite Tim Burton movie? I don't think I could decide. There are so many and they are awesome. Maybe the, the like first Batman with Michael Keaton. Yeah. Yeah, with the penguin. I love that movie. As well, if you haven't already, I am running a giveaway on my channel. I will link the video specifically down below for your chance to win your very own copy of an advanced reader copy of Tonight the Streets Are Ours by Layla Sales. So this doesn't come out until September of this year. It sounds like it's going to be an awesome read for the summer when you're not having to worry about school or anything unless you're in summer school. I feel your pain on that one. But all you have to do is head on over to the video. You just have to comment, leave a comment down below, and you just have to be a subscriber and live in North America because my bank account will not allow me to send anything further than that. And that's it. So until next time, guys, as always, happy reading.